let's talk about elemental magic. As long as humans exist, there was an understanding of elements. Different cultures have created similar ideas and some of those ideas exist to this day. Most traditions of Western witchcraft use the four elements as a big part of their practice and the elements represent different energies of nature and we can work with those energies in life, in healing and in magic. most common way to use the elements would be during the calling of the quarters. We call on the watchtowers or spirits or guardians of the four directions, which are directly connected and representing the four elements as well. Then, during the rituals, we use the manifestation of those energies. As we light a candle, we conjure up fire. As we pour the water into the chalice, we pour the element of water. As we sprinkle the salt or bury something, we use the calming power of the earth. And as we light the incense or use the feathers on the altar, we move the air and use its carrying potential to get the incense smoke to the gods. On the other side, elements are also big in the astrology and tarot, and each suit is tied to a specific element. During the spell work and rituals, we might decide to open the circle in specific direction in order to use the purifying movement of the air, or cleanse with the water, or calm and ground with the earth, or burn in the fire. We call the elementals for help when we need to heal or banish, curse or ignite sympathy and love. We represent the elements on our altar and look into our birth chart to see which element rules us the most. But that is all we do. I've not seen the elements being used besides them being a passive help during the magical practice for the most part. And what does it mean that we are ruled under birth planet with the element of water or fire? We consist of all elements equally. In different parts of our lives, different elements take over. Even in day-to-day -day life, we act in different ways and we see different elements come to light. So we are here to talk more about the elements, this time about the five element system. This depiction of elements comes mostly from Asia, although way more people in the West realize that when the element of spirit is added to the equation, we also have five elements. The only difference might be in the source of the elemental science. Um, in the Western world, it comes from the alchemy and spirit was not considered to be a base element like the other four. In Asia, it also came from alchemy, but mostly from medicine and herbal lore. And it's a much more coherent and better explained system, meaning that if we master the knowledge of it, we can use the elements in unexpected ways. So let's start with the five element theory. In ancient and modern day Chinese medicine, the five element theory is a macro system. The idea is that every little thing in the world, every food ingredient, every herb, body part, material, emotion, even weather and time of the day, part of life can be assigned to a single element. Instead of seeing the elements as detached from us, like we do in the West, Eastern cultures have understood how intertwined we are with the elements of the nature. Uh, we are not standing outside looking in, we are in the middle of it. We can assign anything to an element and use it to better read into situations or signs, into people's emotions, problems, and we can even use that to diagnose problems in people's health. And this is also how Chinese medicine works today. 
three of the elements have the same names uh, but and the same function like the Western ones. So let's look into the other two a bit closer. Wood is same element as the spirit in the West. And the second element is metal, which is an equivalent to the air. Fire, earth and water are pretty clear. They're, they have the same functions in East and West. But let's see what the other two are. Wood element is not actual wood, like the building material. More accurate would be to call it tree. It is a living being, an element that represents the spirit. The tree grows and matures as the years go, go by. When young, it's flexible and able to learn um, and is more resilient to the pressure. It loves movement and change. As it grows older, it turns more rigid and turns more resilient against blows, but it spreads, taking up more space and influencing more everything in the vicinity. This is exactly how we age. In Taoism, one of the main goals was to make humans immortal and to keep the tree element flexible as long as possible. The other interesting element is metal uh, or air in the Western culture. The main difference here is the idea of consistency of this element. In the West, it's very transient, whereas in the East, metal is tough and sharp. It doesn't relate to literal metal, but to the quality of the energy. Air represents the mind, the creativity, movement, change, but also inconsistency um, of the mind in some negative aspects. Metal is connected to wisdom and mature age. So there are also the mind and creativity of the West in it. But it's also a revolutionary element, one that overthrows, changes, invents and holds boundaries. Negative side can show uncapability to keep people at distance or being detached from others. How do elements connect and how do they interact? We don't have a system like this in the West. After studying Chinese medicine, I was first confused that there is anything beyond just the existence of the elements, so their interactions blew me away. The first cycle is the cycle of nourishment. Every element feeds the next. This connection is called the mother-son connection and is considered beneficial. So, the tree feeds fire. Fire warms the earth, making it fertile. The earth gives birth to metal. Metal enriches the water uh, in form of minerals and water makes a tree grow. In the body and in magic, if we need to improve the state of an element, we don't only use that element in the foods or herbs, we also use the one prior to it as it feeds the element that we need. The other beneficial cycle is the grandmother-grandson. This connection connects each element to another by skipping one in between. This is a controlling cycle and a controlling in a good way. In a healthy body uh, and healthy mind, this keeps elements from becoming excessive. Opposite to the idea that we have in the West that we are mostly belonging to one element, in Eastern practices, when one element is dominant, this leads to sickness of the body and imbalance of the mind and spirit. In this cycle, the tree roots keep the ground from eroding. The earth soaks in too much water. The water controls the spreading of the fire the fire can melt metal and the metal can cut down a tree. Now, there are also cycles which are acting opposite and are non-beneficial. 
and every time we see a pathology of an element we can easily determine which aspects of life or emotions are impacted. However, we'll be talking about this later. In the coming weeks I'll be presenting the five elements in detail uh, and how we can use them to diagnose someone's behavior what they can do for us in magic and how to deal with unruly elements in someone's nature. If you have any questions, please comment down below. And if you'd like to hear more, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you all for being here.